The Catholic Response to Racism, today on Made for Glory. Like most people, I watched uh, with horror and sadness uh, the videos that came out um, with the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis, and have watched with confusion and concern and, and, um, and lots of questions of my own at uh, the protests and even some of the riots that have happened throughout our country in the time since then. And uh, the question that I, I've continued to ask myself, and obviously we're not going to get into any sort of definitive answers uh, or how to solve racism um, during this, this short video, but how should I, as a follower of Jesus, how should I, as a Catholic, how should I, as a priest, uh, begin to respond uh, to these issues, to issues of racism, to issues of injustice in our society? And the first thing I think that all of us need to recognize is that what our faith teaches us, what the Bible teaches us is the dignity of each and every human person. So that every single one of us need to recognize uh, that every person, no matter uh, their color or race or ethnicity or economic class, that they are our brothers and sisters, that they have uh, infinite worth and value and dignity in God's eyes. And so any place of racism in my own heart or your own heart, um, any place of hating other people because of their skin, any place of judgments or 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 negativity or jokes, even in your family history, that we need to repent for that because that is a sin. And we need to allow the Lord to remove that from our minds and hearts. But it brings up the second thing, and this is something maybe that, that uh, you've seen in your own life, uh, the question or the thought or the, the kind of uh, proclamation that I'm not racist, so this doesn't affect me. This, this is other people. I, I don't care what color skin you are. I like everybody. Because um, in the, re the reality of our faith as Catholics, as Christians, as followers of Jesus is that's not enough. It's not enough just to say that I myself personally am not, am not racist because we worship a God who pursued us even in the midst of our brokenness, really the incarnation, God entering into this, into the brokenness of this world, uh, the word becoming flesh is God entering into our suffering, entering into even our sin and taking that on himself and redeeming it. And so think about if God uh, approached that, uh, us the same way that we can so often do with difficult issues like this, that like if God said, well, I'm not a sinner, I'm not going to hell, that's their problem. Um, God actually enters into it. And so when we take that on and when we engage with it, even if it's something that we personally um, haven't, aren't afflicted with or haven't seen the ramifications of in our own life, that's actually a, a Christ-like way of living. That's what we're called to be as followers of Jesus is to be Christ-like. Um, and so, and so part of that is getting outside of our comfort zones, getting outside of our echo chambers. I think we live in such a, a politicized and polemical society and world that we as followers of Jesus, we as members of the church need to be able to listen to voices that make us uncomfortable. Listen to voices that are different, that have a different perspective, that have a different experience. If you've never experienced racism in your life, maybe a, a, a starting place is to listen to the voice of someone who has and to see what their experience has been like and to come to appreciate and have some empathy for their perspective and for, for uh, their uh, judgment of what's happening in our country and what has been happening for many, many years. So being able to have that kind of empathy, again, is embodying that Christ-like love and to be able to see that from other people's perspective. That doesn't, that doesn't finish the, the, the conversation. There's still thinking and there's still engagement. There's still action that needs to happen. Um, and that is happening right now. But being able to listen to somebody different than yourself is so key and so central to our faith. And then the last thing is there's this great principle in Catholic thought, in philosophy and theology, it's the Catholic both and. We live in a society that is either or. You're either in favor of protesters or you're in favor of the police. You're either, either in favor of minorities or you're in favor of the establishment. Uh, you're in favor of law, or you're in favor of chaos. So the, the kind of the, the, that these things have been, have been split apart, but the reality is, is as Catholics, we're not either or we're both and, that we can recognize the dignity of peaceful assembly and demonstrations and protests, recognize the reality of people's hurt and pain and hear that and allow it to be heard and allow justice to begin to blossom. And we can be in, in favor of police. We can be in favor of law enforcement and, fir and first responders and, and the personnel that work, put their lives on the line for our society, that we can recognize the dignity of each and every human person. So to allow ourselves to not get drawn into this language that makes it either or, because we're both and, because that's what God is. We worship a God who in the incarnation, again, Jesus Christ is both God and man. 
that he is, ta- he is true God and true man. He's a hundred percent God and a hundred percent human, if you want to put it in, in those terms. And so we need to embody the same thing in our own lives. So maybe just a couple things for us to reflect on. Um, and as the conversation continues, hopefully it, it is actually a conversation that challenges us out of our comfort zones, that challenges me out of my comfort zone to be able to hear um, what other people are going through so that we can together as a society, as brothers and sisters to one another, as sons and daughters of God, the father work for a more just and humane world. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Made for Glory. Thank you for all those who are supporting us on Patreon. We're so grateful to you. Also as well, for all those who are are leaving comments and questions uh, below, that helps us to continue this conversation um, about race and about what it means to be a Catholic in these very challenging times. God bless.